How's it going guys? In this video, I'll be giving you a tour of my Nintendo collection slash bedroom. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, so I really hope you enjoy. So unfortunately, I can't take my good mic around the room with me because it's too heavy. Um, so my voice quality is about to take a dip. Sorry uh, in advance for that. I hope it doesn't affect the viewing experience too much. Um, but if you like what you watch, please consider subscribing and leave a comment down below talking about your favorite items in your game collections. Without further ado, I'm gonna hand it off to me with worse audio quality. I just wanna show you really quick the setup that I'm using for this. I, I'm just using my laptop with a webcam that you can't really see attached to it. And that's just gonna be how we're doing it. Um, it's called not having an actual camera, so this back on the screen on the top here facing out and yeah so let me just start by giving a little like pano of the room now this room has gone through a lot of iterations over the time i've lived in it i mean for context this is the room that i've lived in my entire life and Believe it or not, I was not a Nintendo fan out of the womb. So this room used to look a lot different and then over time it just became progressively consumed by Nintendo things. Now one warning I have is that this is probably not gonna be a very brief video. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna be because I'm obviously still recording it, but uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna be spending quite a bit of time talking about like some specific objects that I have scattered around here. So yeah, strap in for that. I want to start out with this uh, computer desk area. This is where I have my new gaming rig slash editing rig slash whatever you want to call it. Um, very happy with how that turned out. Let me get a better view of that. Sorry, the exposure is going to be kind of bad. I'm relying on my webcam's auto exposure for this, so I'm just going to have to live with it. What you'll notice up here is that I have a lot of these uh, Game & Watches with some boxed Amiibo in the back. So I'm just going to go from uh, left to right and just talk a little bit about each of them. There's that uh, Mario Bros. Game & Watch. That one's cool because it has like the two screens side by side with each other. That's a pretty neat design for a Game & Watch. I have a lot of these um, widescreen units. You're going to see my hand here probably a lot throughout the video. Um, I'll try to keep it to a minimum, but if I want to point something out, you'll see the hand of God come in. So I have these uh, widescreen units going from left to right. I've got Turtle Bridge. I think I got that one in France, actually. Uh, Snoopy Tennis. Um, what is this one? Fire Attack. Yeah, this one is a, a CGL model that I got from the UK, where CGL, whatever company that is, was distributing some Game & Watches for Nintendo back in the 80s. And I've got this classic Super Mario Bros. model. Um, sorry that these mushroom lights are in the way, but got this Popeye one. Nintendo did a lot of like licensed Game & Watches, and those tend to be the less valuable ones for collecting purposes, so <laughs> that's why I have a handful of them, um, just because they're pretty cheap to pick up most of the time. I've got a dual screen pinball unit in the back, and I've got a couple other dual screen ones over here. I've got this Donkey Kong one, which is obviously very iconic for having this D-pad that everyone says, oh, it inspired like every gaming console ever. And behind that, I've got Blackjack, which I have the box for, you can kind of see behind it. Um, Spitball Sparky is an interesting one because it's one of the, um, oh, what do they call these? The super color models. Um, by super color, I guess they really just mean they, like, tinted the plastic to make it look multicolored. It's still monochrome, essentially. 
Um, these tend to be a little bit more valuable because they're harder to find. And I got this one at a local uh, Habitat for Humanity restore. Um, honestly, a lot of the things in this room I've gotten from either thrift stores or yard sales or eBay, Shop Goodwill, like their, their online website, whatever. Um, there are very few things here except like things that I've bought new, like Switch games and other recent things. Um, very few things that I bought at market value. So I also want to point out this um, micro versus system. This one is uh, boxing. And this one's unique because obviously it has these two controllers that come out of the sides. Some people think that that inspired the Switch Joy-Con system. I don't know if I'm too convinced. It's a, it's a pretty ubiquitous design from my point of view. Uh, I didn't point this out. This is the new uh, Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch that they released for the 35th anniversary this year. And unfortunately, this model does not have a kickstand like most of the other widescreen Game & Watches, or in fact, all of the other widescreen Game & Watches that I know of. Um, most of them have this little kickstand so that you can like rest them on a surface and have them function as like a, a nightstand alarm clock or something. Um, but this one doesn't have it, and I don't know why. I feel like it would have been something really easy to add. Maybe they just forgot that that was part of the original design. I don't know. But that is why it is flat against the surface, because I haven't gotten a, a proper stand for it yet to put it at the same angle as the others. Down here, you'll see that I have... It's kind of hard to see. This computer is new. It I built it not with this setup in mind, because I've been moving around between um, like places of residence recently. So this is kind of just here temporarily. So uh, I, I do acknowledge that it's kind of out of place and, and huge on this desk. It's blocking this shelf and the shelves under it. Um, but you can kind of see in there, that's where I have my original Game Boy paraphernalia and that Mario bobblehead. Um, obviously inbox. I really like this Game Boy printer. I think it's super cool. If it, it, you put um, little spools of, let me see if I can get this open. You put, oh, okay. You kind of put, yeah, these little spools of thermal paper, like the same kind of paper they put in receipt printers at grocery stores, and. Um, you can plug it into your Game Boy and it can print things. This is such like a, a 90s artifact, but it'll it'll print things from the games that you're playing, um, at least compatible ones. So like, for example, this could be kind of hard to see, but uh, let's see if it'll focus there. This is, ooh, I think that is definitely, that is definitely aged since I printed it because it's like super hard to see. It's kind of smudged. It was never really crisp, but it used to be a little bit easier to see than that. Um, something that's a problem with these printers is that the paper that they use um, ages over time and it becomes less potent. So I, I think it's still possible to get like new paper for those, but um, my point stands that it is difficult to get anything that looks quality out of those printers most of the time. Still a cool thing though. I like, <laughs> I like how I was like, this is something that I really like. Uh, I think it's a super cool concept. And also it sucks at what it does. But anyway, over here, I've got um, a little uh, acrylic shelving unit with some assorted like 80s consoles, some notable ones. There's a couple of these Intellivisions. Uh, I have a bunch of boxed Intellivision games that I got like as a lot from a thrift store once, super cheap. Um, this Intellivision, as you can see, is uh, missing its right, uh, I don't know what you even call that, like the little metal aluminum, uh, thing on the controller. <laughs> uh, I have the 
behind these yarn Yoshi amiibo, I have this voice synthesis module that I've never actually tested. Uh, and I'm not sure if I even have a game that's compatible with it, but I think it's super cool anyway. And then uh, Intellivision 2, which was the revised model. For some reason, a lot of these game console manufacturers loved the concept of having numpads, like a phone, on all of their devices. No one really figured out game controllers yet, so, I mean, I guess it kind of made sense. It's, like, familiar to people who buy it, but... I don't know, this is clearly not an ideal way to play video games. You like, There's no tactile feedback at all, it's just, yeah, we don't mess with those. Uh, as I mentioned, Yarn Yoshi Amiibo got this glass, um, this Mario 2 glass. Found it at a Goodwill once, that's going to be a common theme. <laughs> Down here, I've got some other things. Uh, that Atari Video Pinball, pretty neat, I think. Down here I've got a, a Bali Astrocade. Doesn't work, and apparently they hardly ever do anymore because of some like awful electronics design. And um, got this, whoops, let's not kill this table. And over here I've got this Telegames Pong Sports 4. It has a bunch of like Pong and Pong like games with slight variations. There were a lot of these back in the day. Um, back before anyone really knew how to make a video game, they were just like, we're gonna make uh, Pong and also 16 slight variations of it, and people are gonna love it, right? Um, people did not love it. Well, some people probably did, but. People got tired of this kind of thing, and that's that led partially to the uh, video game crash in the early 80s. Up here, I've got this uh, Pokemon Symphonic Evolutions poster. So for those of you who don't know, this was a uh, concert series that uh, Nintendo or the Pokemon Company or whoever put on back in... I want to say it was 20... 15 when they did this. Uh, I went to the first show. It was in Washington, D.C., and uh, Junichi Masuda was there, who is the uh, series producer and um, used to be the lead composer for the Pokemon games. And after the show, they were doing autographs. So we got one of these posters and brought it to the autograph area, and we got the signature of some of the people responsible for putting the concert on, like the conductor, so on and so forth. But then down here we also have um, Junichi Masuda's autograph, which is a little bit hard to see. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Yeah, it's super cool, very elaborate, and it's kind of hard to see because of the reflection, but... Um, this is one of my favorite things because of that. It's one of the only... It's one of the only autographed things that I have, and I really like it for that. Over here, on this door, got some posters. Very nice. Um, most of these are from Nintendo Power or from... Uh, Nintendo Force, which is a magazine that I subscribed to for a little while after Nintendo Power uh, was discontinued by Nintendo. So this bookshelf is kind of the centerpiece of the collection from my point of view. It has all of these uh, consoles up and down it with games on shelves. Like this is uh, this is the soul of the collection, so to speak. Like this is all of the actual games and consoles that I actively use. Um, just to take a look at some of these, I'm really stretching my laptop charger, but I think we can get reasonably close. I've got these three game cubes up here. Um, they all have Game Boy players. I've just picked them up like over the years when I've seen them at low prices. I know they're pretty hard to find at low prices now because more people know about them more desirable. That goes for a lot of the stuff in this collection. Um, 
I started collecting back in 2009, I want to say. So back when I was nine. And at that time, video game collecting wasn't really super established yet. And you could find a lot of things for cheaper than you can find them now. Because there isn't all the... There, there wasn't all the hype around it that you see um, in current times. So uh, going down this shelf, I already talked a little bit about these GameCubes. I've got my favorite GameCube games up here on this top shelf. Other GameCube games on these side units, along with some Wii and Wii U games and excess NES games. Speaking of NES, I've got this NES shelf with the good NES games and um, a Famicom, which is the Japanese variant of the NES. I've also got these two uh, NES, uh, it, one of them's the NES Classic Edition and the one on top is the Famicom Classic Edition. So like the version of the NES Classic that they released in Japan in 2015. I've also got the revised model of the NES being the NES 101 sitting there on top. And I've got this, uh, what is this even called? Uh, whatever they, that's the wireless controller thing for the NES. It's attached there. What is it called? It's not the four score. That's the thing that plugs in four controllers. This one's... I don't know. I'll, I'll add it in post. It is the NES satellite. Down here, I've got some Super Nintendo stuff. The super cool uh, drawer that opens up and contains even more games. I think, yeah, the way I have this organized is my favorite ones are out here on this smaller shelf thing. Um, this is where I've got, you know, Mario stuff, uh, Zelda, got Super Metroid here, Star Fox, F-Zero, the works. Something that you'll notice about my collection as a whole is that it's very focused on Mario and Pokemon, and I guess that that's a little bit reflective of my, like, favorite Nintendo franchises being Mario and Pokemon. But it's also kind of just a side effect of Nintendo releasing way more merchandise for those franchises that they than, than they blah, 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 than they do for others. So yeah, I figured that was worth mentioning. I do appreciate all of Nintendo's franchises. Maybe not all of them. There are a lot that I have not played. But damn, I'm gonna expose myself. Wow. Okay. Um, down here. I've got, <laughs> the Wii U is kind of just doubling as a, like, extra shelf because of how flat it is. The gamepad is in the back, you can kind of see the edge of it. Um, suffice it to say, I do not use my Wii U very much anymore, but for a while it was my, uh, my daily driver with, like, Mario Kart, Splatoon, um, Mario 3D World, those are some of my favorites. Um, but yeah, right now it's kind of just a shelf for some boxed NES games. <laughs> and for some reason I've got Super Paper Mario and Endless Ocean there as well, because I, I don't know, I wanted to have them out, but I don't have any other shelves open for those two Wii games. So they they reside there between Zelda for the NES and Final Fantasy 1. Then over here I've got this... Uh, Pikachu N64 behind, I really want to point this out, this is the uh, Hori Taiko drum that they released. Uh, this one's for the Switch, but I think they have models for the PS4 and X, no, not the Xbox, I think it's just the PS4 because uh, the game that it's compatible with being uh, Taiko no Tatsujin, or as it's sometimes called in Western countries, Taiko Drum Master, it's like a rhythm drum game and it's uh it's only released on nintendo and sony consoles pretty sure i've never seen it on pc but yeah this uh makes it feel a lot like the arcade game which i played a couple times at like conventions and stuff and uh really like it so i have the drum controller got my switch not much to say there 
I have this um, special edition Pro Controller from the 2018 Smash Ultimate bundle that they did. And one of my wave birds is out for um, use. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna step back for a second and give you guys a better look at this whole corner of the room. I've got these uh, posters hung up in the back and also on this closet door. I don't know what happened to this one. I'm just realizing now that I don't have a poster there and I can't remember why, it, it's been a while. But yeah, I've got this uh, wire shelving unit in the corner that is really flimsy and a lot of things fall off of it. Funny story, that Virtual Boy used to be like up there on almost the top shelf and there was a time when I bumped into it, the whole thing like wobbled around and then the Virtual Boy fell on my head and then like knocked against the side of this wooden thing and it has a small crack in the top of it now but it still works. Um, <laughs> Thank God, uh, those are pretty hard to come by now and very difficult to repair because they have, they have that like rubber seal around uh, the inside and that's, that's hard to maintain once you open it up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that story aside, I have this wire shelving unit. I make sure not to put valuable things near the, valuable and heavy things near the top of it anymore. So um, let me get a little bit closer here. What I've got is this uh, Nintendo Color TV Game 6. This one uh, is the, I think it's called Buroku uh, Kuzushi or something. Uh, it means, it's essentially like Breakout, um, the Atari game that everyone knows and loves. This was manufactured, I think, yeah, it says 1979. This was manufactured before Nintendo had any real, like, recognizable um, gaming franchises or characters. So they kind of just ripped off Atari and made this thing. Uh, they only released it in Japan, and I found it at a, at a game store in Pennsylvania a few years ago. But I think it's super cool. It has a really neat, like, eight, like I guess, 70s design and I think it's really cool to have a Nintendo uh, home video game that existed before the NES or any of its prominent characters it's just like like this was manufactured at a time when Nintendo was still primarily making toys and playing cards like they did not know that video games were gonna be their big thing yet so I really like this uh, further down we have some Atari stuff. There's this Atari 2600 uh, 4 switcher. They also came with a 6 switch variant, which I think is a little bit more desirable from a collector's perspective. Um, but the 4 switcher is still nice. And then down here we have the Atari 2600 Junior, as it's called, and the Atari 7800 Pro system. Uh, this Atari 7800, which is there in the back was actually one of the first things that I had in this collection. Um, there are a few things around the room that fall into that category and I'll make sure to mention them when we get there, but I really like the um, the design of these. They're very space agey with the black plastic with a chrome strip going across. Very cool. Um, all right, stepping back again. I have this like weird table thing that I've stacked a bunch of boxes on. I don't really know why. I just started doing it one day and it's just built up a wall since then. I've got um, this like little, <laughs> I don't even know what this is. It's like a DS game organizer that I've repurposed to just be a DS light holder. I've got this uh, Zelda DS Lite on the top, then um, got the silver one, the blue one, the white one. This was this was mine growing up, this white one. This was actually my first Nintendo console ever. I got it in uh, 2008, I think, when I was eight. And then over here we've got one of the two-tone DS lights, which is the uh, the red and black one, and this 
metallic uh, rose gold one. Then, whoops, then in the back, there's a black one. It's kind of hard to see, but it is there. I've got behind those this uh, Mario... I have a few Mario 25th anniversary related items here. Um, being this red Wii with its box in the back. It's kind of obstructed, but it's there. Um, this DSi XL. And the 25th anniversary Mario All-Stars disc that they released for the Wii. That's a pretty controversial one. They basically just put a virtual console game on a Wii disc with a soundtrack, or rather a sound selection, and released it for like $50 or whatever. But I also have this um, flyer in the back that I got from the Nintendo New York store, which used to be called Nintendo World back when I got this. It's just a little promotional thing for the game. I thought it was pretty cool, and I have it out on display next to the game itself. I've got a couple of the um, colored variants of the N64s. I think the they were called the Fantastic line. There were like, I don't know, eight different colors that they came in. But right here I've got this grape one, and I think that one's called Jungle Green. And if we look behind <laughs> this Classic Controller Pro that's sealed in box and never used it. I just found it like this at a thrift store. Same goes for that We Speak. Um, I have the box for this uh, Jungle Green N64. It was part of this Donkey Kong set. Came with Donkey Kong 64 and I think uh, an expansion pack or whatever, but um, yeah, it is there and I have its box. I found that at a Goodwill back in the day. I guess, what was this resting on? Yeah, resting on the corner of the N64, god. I can't wait until I have a bigger space for this stuff, because it's probably pretty easy to tell that over time, things have just piled up, and a lot of things don't really have a real sense of purpose being displayed where they are right now, and they obstruct other cooler things, I guess. Um, but anyway, that will come later in life, hopefully pretty soon. I'm uh, gonna be moving out of this house at some point in the near future. Maybe not, probably not with all of this stuff right off the bat, but I'm gonna be starting my full-time job in, I guess, next fall. So over here, I've got this uh, little tower of stuff. It doesn't really have a clear theme to it. It's just stuff that stacked on top of each other in a way that looked somewhat nice aesthetically. So I've got uh, my normal like stock black N64 on the top with Mario Kart 64, of course, classic. Um, below that, I've got another NES and this uh, boxed Mario 3 for the Famicom. The Japanese uh, market got so much better game box art than we got, especially in the 80s and 90s. I wish that American NES boxes looked that cool. Down below we've got Mario Bros for the Famicom. <laughs> this one's still got a price sticker on the back of it. I got it for $7.99. Nice. And I've got a couple boxes for a couple of the DS lights that are over here. These were the two. Like I said before, I had this one growing up and my brother had this black one. Down below, there are some boxed N64 games. I've got Mario 64, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf. Now over here, um, there's this table full of, again, various items. Um, I've got, as I mentioned before, this Virtual Boy that suffered a concussion at some point in the back. Over here, I've got this, sorry, I'm like walking on my knees to do this. <laughs> so if you hear like strange shuffling noises while the camera is shaking around, that is what's happening. Um, I've got this uh, Rob ROB robotic operating buddy for the NES. This was pretty influential in getting people to buy the NES because Nintendo had to convince Americans that the NES was a toy and not a gaming console, so they put this robot in there. 
that can be a different video. If you see anything around this room that you'd like me to talk more in depth about, let me know in the comments because uh, I'd be happy to make some additional videos about some of the more interesting things that I have. Um, I want to point this out. This is a Pokemon Legendary Distribution card for the DS. It, and I wish it would focus. Let me see if I hold it like that. Yeah, there it is. So these were game cards that... <laughs> Let's focus for a second there. These were game cards that Nintendo would distribute to... There it is. Distribute to... Um, game retailers that normally, I think it was normally GameStop in the US, but yeah, game retailers that were distributing legendary Pokemon for various uh, Pokemon DS games. This one is for, um, this one is for the shiny dog trio that they distributed for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, so Entei, Suicune, and uh, Raikou. And I think it also has a Celebi on it that was never actually distributed. Um, so the way this works is you pop it into a DS and if you set the system date and time to when the event would have actually been taking place, you can still use it to get those event Pokemon on compatible games. And I think that's super cool. Most of those were destroyed you see a lot of them online that have like cuts in the side of them and like clearly clearly these stores were directed to like take scissors to these things when they were done with them because nintendo did not want them getting out so it's not super common to find them in a condition where they're like 100 percent intact undamaged um but yeah super cool thing glad that i have it this is a Wind Waker conducting baton that was released as part of like the Symphony of the Goddesses concert series that they did for Zelda's 25th anniversary. Um, the conductor for those concerts used a Wind Waker replica just like this for his conducting and I think uh, a few years later they mass produced them for a very brief period of time. You see these go for uh, a lot more than what I paid for it nowadays. Um, but yeah, I think it's just really cool as a replica high quality Wind Waker. Then over here I've got some uh, 3DS hardware. I've got the original 3DS, 3DS XL, and the new 3DS XL, which is the neat Majora's Mask edition. This is my uh, quote-unquote current 3DS that I use when I want to play 3DS games, which isn't as often as it used to be, but point stands, this is what I'll use if I want to play 3DS games. Down below this table, I've got a couple of these uh, first four figures Mario statues. This one on the right was released for Mario 3D Land, and the one on the left was for Mario 3D World, as you can tell by the respective uh, power-ups that Mario's got on. Yeah, I really love the quality on these. First Four Figures is known for their high quality um, painted like PVC statues, not sponsored. I just really like the statues that they make. Some They're often prohibitively expensive, hence why I only have these two. But yeah, one day I would like to have uh, more of them. Now over here, I'm going to talk about the Game Boys in a second, but first off, underneath I have these, uh, I have like some Mario Pez dispensers and like Hot Wheels cars. I didn't really have a good place to display these, uh, so they're just kind of piled up in here. But what's also here, and what I find arguably more interesting than candy and toy cars, is uh, these e-reader cards. For the Game Boy Advance e-reader. So I have uh, a few uh, packs of these. This one is for Mario 3, but I also have Donkey Kong 3 and Tennis. So what Nintendo did is they had this like e-reader add-on for the Game Boy Advance that you plugged in and it could read these cards that you swiped through it. And if you swiped in 
a series of cards, you could essentially like load a basic like NES game into it. It's a pretty weird and unique concept. Definitely quintessentially a Nintendo concept, but I think it's pretty cool. It's uh, a relic at this point. It's just a, a weird thing that they did at, at a point in time. Over here on this shelf, I've got a bunch of Game Boys. Um, not much to say about these. They're just Game Boys, nothing too special. Except uh, over here, I've got a couple special edition ones. This one is the Pokemon Game Boy Color. And this is the Mario 20th Anniversary Game Boy Micro that they released in 2005, I think. Um, this is pretty hard to find nowadays. This one's not in the best condition, but I found it at like a, uh, like a video store locally right after someone dropped it off and I got it for like 20 bucks um, many years ago. <laughs> That's probably one of my best, uh, best pickups ever. Something else I want to point out before we move on is this um, boxed, it's actually sealed copy of Pokemon Gold for the Game Boy Color. And I've got it in this uh, UV resistant acrylic case to protect it because it, it needs to be protected. A lot of these uh, Game Boy games that I have against this back wall like fall through the crack in the back and uh, have to fish them out from time to time. Don't want that to happen to the sealed Pokemon Gold because that is way more valuable. <laughs> now over here I've got um, Amiibo. <laughs> Again, not a lot to say about these. I was super into collecting these when the uh, Smash Wii U set was um, in production and they were coming out with new waves of them. But over time, I don't know, my interest has kind of diminished. Uh, I have some of the Smash Ultimate ones against the window, as you can see, but um, I don't have all of them. I don't know, Nintendo raised the price of their Amiibo from $13 to $16 and even though that doesn't seem like a lot of money that was enough to dissuade me from just like blindly purchasing every amiibo that they put out for Smash just to have as a display piece. Um, but maybe one day I'll get the remaining ones as like a used lot. Down here there's uh, a shelf. I don't really... there's not really a, a, a theme for this shelf. It's just like etc. I guess there's some amiibo there in the back that wouldn't fit anywhere else. And uh, the Animal Crossing amiibo set, which I have most of, I'm missing a couple, but um, they're mostly there. I've got this uh, Smash uh, Club Nintendo soundtrack that they- whoops, Kirby is gone. Uh, this, <laughs> this Smash soundtrack that they put out for the Wii U and 3DS games. Uh, this was something that they gave out through Club Nintendo if you registered both the Wii U and 3DS versions of the games. It's not a complete soundtrack, I don't think, but it has a lot of music on there. Let's put Kirby back where he belongs. Uh, this is the e-reader that I was talking about before. I don't know, for some reason I'm, I'm deciding to go into a lot of depth on these obscure Game Boy related peripherals, but... Uh, <laughs> This is the e-reader. You can see there's this slot here for swiping the cards. Really weird thing. Imagine walking around on like a, a schoolyard carrying one of those things and like a stack of cards to swipe to play your games. Couldn't be me. In the back here I have this uh, sealed booster pack for the jungle expansion of the Pokemon TCG. Um, I think this is pretty cool. I don't plan on opening it because I think it's uh, it's the coolest if it's kept sealed. I have most of the early sets of Pokemon cards complete already in a binder somewhere that I might show at some point in this video. So I'm not like... <laughs> Not super incentivized to open that because it's not like I'm I'm missing a lot of cards. Down here a little bit further, I have this um, 
Mario shelf. It's just a shelf with a lot of Mario figures and stuff. Um, a lot of them are Mario Kart related. This one, <laughs> I love this one. Nintendo, when the Wii U came out, did a uh, like a kids meal promotion at Burger King, where they had a lot of um, Wii U related like cheap plastic toys. One of them being this gamepad replica. <laughs> I remember I went to Burger King for like the first time in my life, and I don't think I've been since. I went to Burger King just to get one of these toys because I think they're really unique. <laughs> the 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 idea that Nintendo would go out of their way to make a plastic version of the Wii U gamepad. I don't know, I just think it's pretty funny. Um Yosh. Down here at the bottom, I have this Zelda shelf with Zelda things. Um, not too much to say about this. I put my Guardian Amiibo down here because I think it fits better here with the other Zelda Amiibo than anywhere else in the room. Um, that is the Zelda shelf. A lot of figures. I got this Phantom Hourglass lunchbox. Twilight Princess HD in the back. The box for that. Um... I like Zelda. Over here on these adjacent shelves, I have um, some Pokemon stuff. I don't know if you can tell which generation might be my favorite over others. Hint, it's Gen 5 because I have an entire shelf devoted to Gen 5 related memorabilia. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got... Somehow over the years I've accumulated like an army of Zekrom and Reshiram and Kyurem figures. I don't know how I ended up with that many, but they're there. And yeah, some other Unova Pokemon in figure form. Very cool. Uh, something I want to point out is I have two of these uh, soundtracks. These are imported from Japan. They're like CD soundtracks complete for both black and white. And over there on the opposite side of the shelf I have the one for black and white too and I might do a full video about these at some point because I think they're really cool it's pretty hard to find these now and I really love these soundtracks so I think I bought these back in the day from uh, Play Asia, which is a website that imports a lot of things to the US that are only sold in Japan I'll put that back where it was one day I want to uh, collect more game soundtracks because I, I think that they're really unique items. I'm a, I'm a big fan of game soundtracks to begin with. Now down here below I have some other Pokemon figures with the ones that are prominently in front being pre-order bonuses for some of the DS era Pokemon games. Here's one for Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Over here is the pre-order figure for uh, Alpha Sapphire, which is way less cool looking. I don't know what happened there, but um, <laughs> we accept it. And further down, I have yet another Mario shelf with some more Mario related things. Um, these two statues came with the others that I showed before, the first four figures statues for 3D Land and 3D World. And yeah, I don't have a lot more to say about this shelf. There's this really <laughs> strange looking Mario plush. It's like very flat for some reason. And that's not from age. It just came like that. Uh, that Mario plush is probably 30 years old at this point, if not older. It's probably older. That was one of the first ones that they made. Um, so it would have been mid eighties probably. And now zooming out again, to this last corner, or I guess the last corner with interesting stuff in it. There's one more corner, which is just the corner of my bed. But uh, yeah, there's this corner where I have most of my plush toys that I've accumulated over the years and some computers. I, I have a lot more computers than this in another part of the house. I don't want to show that to you guys because it's not <laughs> really presentable. I have a lot of computers and not a lot of space to display them, so it's kind of bad. 
But I have two of my favorites over here, being the Commodore 64, which right now has a printer underneath it, a dot matrix printer, a couple of these 1541 floppy drives. It has the, what is this called? It's, 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 the, uh, it's the cassette reader. It has an actual name, but I forget what it is. It is the Commodore data set. And the unit itself down here, and right now I have this uh, overlay on it to use with the Music Maker software, which is also what's inserted in that cassette drive. I might make a video about that one day because I think it's really neat. But then over here next to it is this Mac SE Super Drive um, from the late 80s, I think. And yeah, I think that these old Macs have really iconic designs and they still hold up today, design-wise, not power-wise. You can't do much with one of these now, except, like, play some period games. But I digress. It's it's cool to have. Down here, I've got this, <laughs> this Melodica. And behind it, some Switch games. I've got... <laughs> I forget where I found this. Uh, but it's Pac-Man World 2 for the Game Boy Advance, sealed. Um... This is really, as far as sealed games go, especially because it has a little tear in the top, it's not very desirable, but I keep it sealed anyway, because what, am I actually going to play the game? No. Um, and then behind the Switch games and Pac-Man World 2, I have 3DS games and further down some uh, DS game cases. So this corner of the room, as I mentioned before, is clearly my bed. Um... I've got some larger plushes there that are more pillow-like, just just cause they're they're comfy. Um, I really love this huge Ditto one. It has something about it about the stuffing that's inside of it is so like satisfying to just do that. <laughs> um, I got that one at the uh, Nintendo New York store a couple visits ago. I think they still have them there, so if you're interested, check it out there. I think they also saw them on the Pokemon Center website. Um, I have some posters on the wall over here. These two prints uh, are Mario 64 paintings printed on a canvas and also like uh, redone, up res, whatever you want to call that. Um, these I got off of Etsy from a seller, I, they might have changed their store name, but when I bought them, it was something like N64 Print Shop, something along those lines. So uh, check that out if you want prints like these. I think they have ones for most of the paintings in Mario 64, and I think also some of the paintings in uh, Ocarina of Time in the Forest Temple. And up here above them, I have these 3DS era promotional posters that I picked up from a convention I went to a few years ago. Not much else to say about those. These were posters that like Nintendo would give to retailers and stuff to put in their store windows. They even have like adhesive strips on the back of them for that purpose. And over here, I've got this, <laughs> this Undertale. Temi art. I actually bought this from Temi herself, uh, the artist, at a convention. Uh, it was at MAGFest in 2016, I want to say, and somewhere on here she has signed it. I don't know if it's entirely visible with it being in the frame, but uh, she has signed that, and I think that's cool. So now we're almost done. Um, over here I have like my nightstand with a lamp. Let me turn that on because the room's getting kind of dark. The sun's starting to set. Um, I don't, was that a good move? I don't know. <laughs> I think the camera kind of hates that. But I've got this, uh, Vectrix up here with a Labo VR headset above that. Down below I have this, uh, Macintosh Classic, which doesn't work. And... <laughs> Further down, there's this uh, Palkia and Giratina Mega Blocks sets that I constructed a long time ago. These were imported from Japan. And then over here, I have some final 
additional Pokemon plushes. These are some of, some of my favorites. One that I like in particular is this 10th anniversary Pikachu. There he is, round boy. I'm starting to wonder if this is a, a knockoff because... What I assumed was originally just a misprint, being that the tail is attached on the wrong end somehow. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like if this were an official Pokemon product that they would have quality assured better than that. So I don't know, I have to like look up pictures of what this plush is supposed to look like and compare them very closely. Um, here's the, the tag, if any of you are like experts in plush toy knockoffs you can tell me if like this tag looks fake if the camera would focus it doesn't look like immediately fake like the printing is pretty high quality anyway i don't know why i'm focusing on this one specific plush in this video but <laughs> i think it's pretty hilarious that the tail is sewn on the wrong end <laughs> so i'll put that back And yeah, I've got some books, game guides, what have you down there. Uh, also under this desk, I have my old computer that I was using from like 2013 to um, a, a couple months ago when I made this new one. Uh, so a lot of a lot of memories with that guy, but it was just getting kind of out of date with its hardware, despite my efforts to upgrade it every few years or so. Okay, so really quick, uh, this is me a few hours later. I realized during editing that I forgot to talk about two pretty important parts of the collection being like this entire shelf and uh, where I keep my controllers. So um, let me just quickly talk about this stuff. This is where I have uh, a lot of my Sega things, or rather like all of them. Uh, I've got uh, the Genesis, the mini Genesis, sorry for the lighting, it's uh, later in the day, sun isn't there anymore, so it's hard to get the lighting good. But um, yeah, got the Genesis, the Saturn down there, you can kind of see Dreamcast up here with the Master System, Master System 2 in the back, which wasn't released in the US, I got that one in the UK. Um, then a Game Gear up here with a uh, a Model 1 Genesis in the back attached to the uh, Sega CD second revision, the one with the the attachment on the side. And I've got a couple OG DS's here. Um, I also didn't mention this before, this is a Pokemon XD Special Edition uh, GameCube. And I don't want to gloss over this, on the bottom shelf I have this Nintendo DS uh, development unit, which I actually made a full-length video about, which I will link uh, in the description for you to go watch if you want to. And then over here, something I did not mention before is that in this drawer, I have all of my controllers and chargers for <laughs> the Nintendo stuff that I have. I really like this orange one for the GameCube, as well as I have um, the controller for the Panasonic Q, which was a Japan exclusive uh, GameCube <laughs> slash DVD player that Panasonic made, and um, it's a pretty unique thing. I don't have the console itself, but I have the controller, and um, I think it's a cool little uh, oddity to see a GameCube controller with a Panasonic logo on it. So, I think that about does it. Um, I'm sitting in my swivel chair now, so I'm just gonna do one swivel around the room. But yeah, um, I really wanted to make this video because I don't know how much longer this room is gonna remain like intact the way it is. I mentioned that like uh, pretty soon I'm going to be starting my full-time job, moving somewhere else, not taking all this stuff with me at first, but like eventually once I start making roots in a particular location, I'll probably take a lot of this stuff with me and this room will not look as cool as it does now. So just wanted to make this video and 
preserve it in its current state, talk about some of my favorite things, and uh, yeah, like I said a few minutes ago, if there's anything in here that you want to see me talk about more in depth, I would be happy to make follow-up videos. I, I think I plan to about some of these things. Um, I have some time here <laughs> between semesters on an extended winter break because of uh, world events. So I'm going to be pretty bored here. So you might see some new videos from me coming out soon. But yeah, that's about all from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next video.